Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us right now. My Bible is not open to the book of 2 Thessalonians. That's where we're studying in our normal days here on Bible Tract Echoes. But this is our Tuesday edition. We call it our Tract and Truth Tuesdays. We're trying to use our Tuesday broadcast to better sharpen our skills and our abilities to communicate the gospel of Jesus Christ both audibly, I believe, to eyeball with those that do not know Christ, but also sharpen our skills in using gospel tracts. I'm going to talk about a couple of gospel tracts here in just a moment, but why don't you right now get your Bible open to the book of the Psalms, Psalm 73. I'm going to read two verses there in a moment. Psalm 73, I refer to Psalm 73 as the uh, Psalm of the Cadillac and the Volkswagen, or perhaps I ought to update that title and call it, let's say, the the Psalm of the BMW and the, uh, and the perhaps, oh, what car can I think of? The Hugo. <laughs> Remember that car? Well, anyway, Psalm 73. But let me begin this way. Just a, a, a week, oh, maybe a week and a half ago, I received a letter from a friend of mine who lives in Peoria, Illinois. He's a godly man, a gospel-loving man. And but Uh, He has never lost the wonder and the humiliating truth that God saved him out of a life of, of great overt sin. But due to his health issues, this man cannot drive a car. So he takes public transportation wherever he goes. And as I said, he sent me a letter. In the letter, he told me how he was on a city bus. A young lady got on the bus and sat next to him. And with a smile, he said hello and basically said this, would you like something to read while you ride? Well, he offered her a track. The gal took the track that she was offered and read it right then and there. And once she was done, my friend asked her, what do you think about my paper? He called it a paper, calling it a track, calling it a pamphlet, calling it a paper, who cares? She said, and I quote now, I believe what it says. Can I sign the prayer on the back right now? End quote. Well, that day on a Peoria, Illinois city bus with no fanfare, no fancy tactics, a young lady received Christ as her savior through the simple, clear message of a gospel track. And needless to say, friend, I love stories like this. I love my friend. I love all who are tenderly sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with the loss that are around them. If you know Christ as Savior, I know what's in your heart. There is a hankering in your soul to be a gospel teller, to see through you others come to know Jesus Christ. Whether that is a skill that you have already been developing or haven't yet, that is a desire of your heart. God put that there. Hopefully today's broadcast will help you get there. Now, before I read scripture and tell you how to how to better sharpen your skills in t- giving the gospel, let me tell you about a couple of gospel tracks. Now, just in case you are unfamiliar with the word track, remember the word is spelled T-R-A-C-T. We're talking about a short written presentation of how to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. I have two particular tracks in my hand right now. They really are one track in the same, and I'll explain why in a moment. Our hallmark track of our ministry, Bible Tracks Incorporated, is this one, The New Birth. We see more people come to Christ through this gospel track than any of our other gospel tracks, and normally they come to Christ through this track because this track puts it all together. It tells what salvation is and what it is not. It tells what being born again means and what it does not mean. And it tells about the false ideas people have, and it lays it out very clearly, simply using the word of God. But it's a longer track. It's 12 inches long when it's opened up. 
The other track here in my hand is called Born Again. Born Again. It's basically the same track, only it's only six inches long. It's just as clear, just as concise. But dear friend, it too will be the means by which people are confronted with false ideas of how to get to heaven, how to have their sins forgiven, and the right ideas, which is through receiving Jesus Christ as Savior. Now, friend, at the end of the broadcast, my announcer is going to give you three different ways to contact us. Would you listen? Would you be ready with pen and paper? Jot down the contact method that works best for you and let us send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks in it. These two tracks, The New Birth and Born Again, will be in there. Psalm 73, verse 3 says this, For I, a godly man, a believer, was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And then going on to describe the wicked, verse 6 opens this way of Psalm 73. Therefore, pride compass them about as a chain. I'm going to stop right there. Now, as I said, during this year of Tuesday broadcast, we're trying to use our broadcast as a as a gospel track seminar, so to speak. And I've been attempting to share with you how to use gospel tracks to share the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel of Christ with others. But one of the greatest challenges to becoming a soul winner is this whole issue of pride. Pride can pride can make us do strange things. It can act in strange ways. Sometimes pride will hold people back from doing things that they know they ought to do. For instance, you may be in a group of people and somehow or other, this group begins to have a discussion about Bible preachers on the radio or Bible preachers on television or whatever, and they begin to mock them. And you listen, but you do not defend the gospel. Pride holds you back. Or perhaps you get caught up in uh, their conversation, you join the crowd, and you say things you wish later you didn't. You participate in mocking the, the gospel preachers. In this case, pride made you do something you didn't want to do and shouldn't have done, but you wanted to be accepted by the group. Pride often keeps us from sharing Christ. But notice the verse there, verse 6 of Psalm 73. Pride compass them about as a chain. Pride is a real emotional chain in our soul. Satan loves to use pride to hinder our growth in Christ. But it's even worse than this. Over in the book of Daniel, Daniel 5 verse 20, in speaking about King Nebuchadnezzar's life, Daniel said about him, and I'm quoting now, when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened by pride. Pride can harden a person's mind, their thinking, yours and mine, if we let it. You and I need to ask ourselves, am I holding back from giving out tracts? Am I holding back from telling others the gospel because of pride? Do I want the the person's approval more than I want them to see Jesus Christ as their Savior? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 31 says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And then it begins to list the evil, pride and arrogancy and and an evil way. And it goes on from there. All right. The question though we need to ask is how can you and I not just try to overcome pride, but kill pride in our lives and replace pride with godly fear, a biblical grasp of ourselves, and with a love for the lost. How can we do that? I'm going to suggest four steps. Jot these down, won't you please? Four steps. Number one is memorize and meditate on verses that tell God's attitude on pride. Let me say that again. Memorize and meditate on verses that tell God's attitude on pride. Probably one of the most famous ones is Proverbs 6, beginning of verse 16, where it says, Six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And it talks about a haughty look, a pride attitude in a life. God hates that. All right, that's step number one. Memorize and meditate on verses that tell about God's attitude towards your pride, my pride. Step number two. Again, the words are memorize and meditate. Memorize and meditate on verses that describe the status of lost people. Let's memorize verses that tell what is the state of lost people, people without Christ. Now, 
key, a key one has to be Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, where those verses that begin, and you hath he quickened, that is made alive, or dead, in trespasses and sins. He walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. We were children of the evil one, we're Satan. But then in Ephesians 2, verse 12, two key two key descriptions that really were the ones that probably pierced my heart and helped me with uh, this whole issue more than any others. Ephesians 2 verse 12 says that lost people are without hope and without God. Now listen to me right now. Lost people have a God, small g. They have a God. Everybody's got a God. Normally it's themselves, but they are without the true and living God. Lost people, you and I, before Christ, we were without hope and without God. Third step, pray. Pray your memorized verses back to God and then personalize them. For instance, let me give you an example. Proverbs 6, 16, my personalized prayer would go something like this. Father, there are six sins you hate and the very first one is a haughty look. Lord, I have that. I am a proud person. My pride is keeping me from sharing Christ with blank, with what person? Put up somebody's name in there. Or if I were to use Ephesians 2.12, here's how my prayer might go. Father, I was once without hope. I didn't stand a chance to get to heaven. I was dead in my sins. I had my own self as my God. I lived to please me. And Father, I'm still living to please myself. When it comes to witnessing, I'm afraid of what others will say. Father, my friend blank, put their name in there. My friend is right now without hope. Help me offer them the hope found in Jesus Christ. That's a good sample prayer. If you and I pray that way before God, God will come to our aid. He will He will help transform our, our pride into love and brokenness over the lost. Step number four, learn. Learn. Learn how to share the gospel. Take a class on how to tell the gospel at your church. Well, if your church doesn't have such a class on this, then go to your pastor and ask him. Or if you're a lady, go to your pastor's wife. Ask him. Ask her, would you teach me how to share the gospel? Uh, friend, pastors are supposed to help do this. But let me politely say, if your church or your pastor won't teach you how to tell the gospel, then go to a church that will. I did say that because, friend, a church that does not have, I uh, want to help folk learn to do evangelism, is a church that doesn't have Christ's heart at its heart. I'm going to say that again. A local church that does not help its Believe its followers, its its folk, its its people that attend there. A church that does not help its folk learn to do evangelism is a church that does not have Christ's heart at its heart. Dear friend, do you have Christ's heart? Do I have Christ's heart at my heart, your heart? If we do, then we're going to want to tell the gospel to the lost. God help us. We need to kill pride. Pride's keeping us away from being a gospel teller to those who are in desperate need of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.